I am here to talk to you about creating a positive culture for contribution and collaborations for your open projects. And we will specifically be looking at making a contributing guide and a code of conduct. So let's get going and we'll try to do this quickly. So I am Lily and I'm a product manager for the Frictionless Data Project, which is an open source project. And I work at the Open Knowledge Foundation and you can also follow me on Twitter. So what is a project's culture? The culture is very important to think about when you're working on an open project because it isn't just you that's working on this project. Ideally, you want to be creating a community and we just heard a little bit about this, like why you would be creating a readme document. Part of that is to help build up your community. And a healthy project culture has a healthy community, meaning it has diverse members that um, you know, have different backgrounds and ideas and talents that can help build your community. So to help build and guide your culture, there's a few things you need to keep in mind. One is that it's a conscious decision that you as a leader need to make. And what I mean by that is that a culture will build itself within your project, regardless of whether or not you build it, it's like it will still happen. But for it to be the culture that you want to build, you need to make some decisions and help it build according to your values. So you need to identify what your values are. And that includes things like, how should people behave that are part of this? Okay, here is a picture example of um, things to think about for your project culture. So this is an XKCD. We were also just talking about, um, can I load it up on your laptop? Sure, oh, just hit both shift keys to change over to QWERTY. Caps lock is control, space bar is caps lock, and two figure scroll means through time instead of space. And dot, 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 with the subtitle saying, once I've used a computer for a while, no one else will ever use it again. And this is showing you that the choices that you make determine who can or can't also use your project. So a project culture is more than just its goals. It's also things like the language, um, a shared set of norms, your expectations and your people's expectations, the tools that you choose to use, and things like how decisions are made and the project's identity. Okay, so how can you build your project's culture? Two ways we're going to talk about today are using clear contributor guidelines and a code of conduct that importantly is enforceable. So what is a community? This image was on these slides and I thought it was so cute and I really like it because it shows that, you know, a community is about different, well, animals here, but different people, different users and how they all interact together. And maybe, you know, one part of the community is the base, like the thing that's keeping everyone warm, but there are other members of the community that also have different goals and they have different reasons for being Part of the community. So it's important to understand why people are part of the community and what they gain from it and what they can give. What is contribution? Contribution is a vital part of teamwork and the contributions come in many different forms and we'll talk about those a little bit here. Um, but they can be like writing code, writing documentation, editing, giving ideas, project management. There's all sorts of things that team members can do to help the team as a whole. On GitHub, there are several ways you can look at contributors and contributors is a specific term that GitHub uses. And for instance, this is from the Frictionless Data Project. I work on one of our repositories. We have 23 contributors. So on your GitHub projects, you will also see how many contributors you have. So a good way that everyone, all of your projects should have a contributing document. And you can do this on GitHub. It's called a contributing.md, so it's a markdown document. And here's an example of 
one from one of our repositories. And so it has some general guidelines and this specific document goes on for a long time, but it tells you in all potential users how they can help. So it gives you instructions for like how to write the code according to um, the style guide. And it also tells you things like the language that um, is most commonly used and it can give tips for beginners and it will tell you things like, you know, this is the software that we use and here's where you can go to find help. So everyone should create a contributing.md file and there are, I think there's lots of examples, um, I think in the notes as well for these. Okay, so why and what? Contributing.md tells you um, the structure of contributions. It provides guidelines in a standard style. And it's also used to improve efficiency so people don't have to ask the leader over and over again, you know, how can I contribute? You can point them to this guide. And it's a great way to involve new people and build up your community. There are different people that you need to consider when making this contributors guide. So the owners, which would be, you know, most of you owners of the um, organization or project, all of the contributors, which are all members that have done something to help, and then the consumers or the users of the project. And, you know, sometimes people will fall in all three of these categories. Okay, you can also create a contributors or community page on your website if you have a project website that's different from the GitHub. And this is a nice example from the Carpentries. And I'll just leave that there for um, you guys to look through later, but it has a lot of great detail. All right, so now we're gonna talk about code of conduct and why it's important to have a code of conduct. And um, we talked about this a little bit already, but your project will really flourish with a diverse community. But, oh, I skipped one. Hold on, skipped a few. Oh, no, I think I'm just going in the opposite direction. Okay, but what if something happens? <laughs> if something happens, you need to have a code of conduct. A code of conduct is a set of rules that outline the social norms, rules, and responsibilities of an individual project, party, or organization. And it's commonly abbreviated as a COC. So a lot of people ask, do you really need a COC? Yes, is the short answer, but why? Uh, a code of conduct invites people to your project. It sets clear expectations for your community members, and it tells contributors that you care about your community and that you care about creating a welcoming space for everyone. Here's some links to some examples of code of conduct and I especially like the PyCon code of conduct. It is the most thorough code of conduct that I think I've ever seen. And I reference it all of the time. So I really recommend the PyCon code of conduct. Here's an example from the CSV con code of conduct, which I helped write this well earlier in this year when we went to a virtual conference. And it has a lot of um, the basic parts of the code of conduct. It, outlines who the code of conduct is for, what kind of behavior is expected, what kind of behavior is not allowed, and importantly, the enforcement and reporting that would occur if there's a breach of the code of conduct. So a code of conduct is not just a box checking item. And a lot of people will create one and say, oh, we're done but you actually aren't done. It's really important to make sure that your code of conduct has both enforcement and reporting included in, and you need to have specific ways that it's clear to people how they can report and who they are reporting to. And many of you probably heard this. I think Yo was mentioning the code of conduct earlier and went through a lot of details. So, you know, the Open Life Sag code of conduct is also a great example. Okay, so getting started, how do you start with your code of conduct? You should brainstorm some core words that represent your community values. And then think about behaviors that you want to encourage or discourage. Think through the process for incidents and complaints. 
And then also think about the consequences for people that act outside of these norms that are defined. And of course, you have to understand and accept your role as a project lead. And if you are uncomfortable or unsure about how to um, deal with reports, reach out to your community and ask for help and support. So tips and takeaways. Encourage and reward good practice. Designate a code of conduct and safety committee to help you with this. Make sure your code of conduct is posted, visible, and clear and communicated to your contributors and use an existing code of conduct. Many of them are openly licensed, which you just learned about, and you can reuse them. 